Homecoming 2022 continues tonight. It's the Crosstown War. The Wolves of Clarkston come in to face the Lake Orion Dragons. We've got it all for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Pre-game is underwritten by Malash's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. The Malash family has been serving Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1950s. Give them a call at 248-393-2222. Good evening, everyone. Chris Frishing is to my right. I'm Doug Corliss. It's homecoming. Chris, we talked during the week, and to kind of paraphrase the old coach Jim Mora when he was with New Orleans, and someone asked him about the playoffs, and he said the famous word, playoffs? Playoffs, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really conceivable that even at 500, at 3-3, three and three, the Dragons have a playoff shot. Well, you're right. The, the way they've structured the playoffs now in the MHSA, the top 32 teams in each division make the playoffs. But you don't get in by record necessarily. You get in by playoff points. And, and the playoff points are simply determined by who you play, and then the, you even get points for your opponents and their wins. So if you think about the OAA Red and you think about Lake Orion's schedule, they played Utica Eisenhower 5-1. and one. They played Adams 5-1. and one. Stony Creek's 3-3. Three and three. Uh, West Bloomfield's 5-1. and one. They play Clarks tonight. They're 4-2. and two. And then, oh, by the way, the week nine of the regular season, they're playing Celine, who is currently 6-0. and oh. And so while the focus, yes, is currently on Clarkston tonight, uh, based on playoff points and strength of schedule, if Lake Orion wins one of the next three games, more than likely, more than likely, they will make the MHSA a playoffs. Clarkston comes in tonight. Uh, new coaching staff, Justin Pinner takes over for Kurt Richardson. They're stocked. They've got Ethan Clark, a really good running back. Um, Mike Hine is a veteran quarterback, three-year starter. And the offensive line is anchored by uh, Cole Dellinger, who's committed already. They're a pretty good team. They are. I mean, they score a lot of points. They average 32.8 points a game. But you know what? They also give up a lot, too, at 28.5 uh, a game. Um, this is a team that's very interesting because they've won games 62-56 in Week 2 against Southfield A&T. They beat Adams 45-35. to But also, you know, by the way, two weeks ago, they beat Oxford 14 to 3, or 14 to 3, excuse me. So they can play any type of football game. Um, but, you know, for them, currently, they're in a tie for first place in the OAA Red. They got West, West Bloomfield uh, is, is playing at uh, Oxford tonight, and Adams is playing Stony Creek. So Clarkston Orion is a big game as it is, but, you know, it's even bigger because on the, on the flip side, Clarkston's playing for first place in the OAA Red. And... The OAA, we know there's a log jam, but look at tonight. We've got, it's homecoming. We've got cheerleaders from about four different levels here. We're going to have alumni coming back. It's really special. It is, and, and I'll be honest with you. The first thing I looked at when I looked at the schedule, I said, why did Lake Orion schedule Clarkston on homecoming? <laughs> You know what? Coach Bell will play anybody at any time. That's just the way the schedule works itself out. But you know what? This is a special week. Clarkston had their homecoming last week at their place. Uh, obviously, Lake Orange is tonight. It's uh, a lot of stuff going on, both on and off the field. So you know what? You, you come out on top on a game like tonight. That makes the homecoming weekend that much more sweeter for Lake Orange. As we said, it's a special night. And the atmosphere is electric. I talked to Coach Bell and Coach Blackstock, and we we all agreed that if you can't get excited about a game like this, there's really something wrong with you. <laughs> so we've got it all for you. Stay with us. Pre-game was underwritten by Malash's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. The Malash family has been providing automotive services to the Lake Orion area since the 1950s. Give them a call at 
The Lake Orion Marching Band performing the national anthem led by director of bands Michael Steele just before kickoff for the homecoming game between the Lake Orion Dragons and the Clarkston Wolves. Chris, you've got your keys to the game. Yeah, the number one, certainly ball control. You know, analytics is becoming more and more prominent in sports today, and one of the stats we've got to look at tonight is, is time of possession. Um, you know, does Lake Orion sustain drives that, that eat up clock, move the chains, and keep the Clarkston offense off the field? Uh, the number of possessions, let's, let's watch out for that tonight. Uh, last week versus West Bloomfield, Lake Orion possessed, possessed the ball just over 15 minutes the entire game of a 48-minute game, and you just can't do that tonight if you expect to win. Uh, tied in with ball control is obviously turnovers, the turnover margin. Uh, currently, Lake Orion is minus four in turnover margin, and you know what? They, which means they've given the ball back to the opponents four more times than they've taken it away. Uh, get this: in the three wins, Lake Orion has not turned the ball over once. In the three losses, they've turned the ball over seven times. So a whole lot of the ball football, obviously. And then, and then you have to number three, you have to curtail the big play defined as a play of 20 yards or more. Clarkston's a big play football team. Ethan Clark and Michael Hine will talk about a lot tonight. But you know what? They've got both of those guys have got multiple runs of over touchdown runs of over 20 yards. But Lake Orion has given up 41 big plays, almost seven per yep. game of over 20 yards. Can't allow the big play capabilities of Clarkston to circumvent the uh, the strategies and the ball control offense of Lake Orion tonight. Will Hoffman will kick off deep for the Wolves is number 13, Kean Lavelle. And number, I can't read the others, it ends in a zero. Will Hoffman approaches, we're underway. End over end kick into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20, first and 10 for the Wolves. Our officials tonight, the referee is Chris Lund. He's the crew chief. Headlinesman is Darius Finney. Line judge is Matt Riley. The umpire is Gilly David, the first lady to ever work a state final. Back judge is Ty Holtz. And Corey Cooper is the side judge. And Nick Lazzotti is the field judge. Hines starts out from a pistol. Ethan Clark is the back behind him. He gets the handoff, takes it right up the middle, stopped after a gain of about a yard. It'll be second down. Good, good swarming by the defense. Yeah, I mean, Coach Bell's talked about the strength of the, the Lake Orion defense is that front line. They're going to have to play well tonight to contain both Clark and Heim. So it'll be second, and they're calling it eight. Clarkston comes out, twins to the left, single wide right. Hine stays in a pistol. Now motion this side. Clark again cuts it around the end. He's in the open field, and they're not going to catch him. Touchdown for Clarkston. We said it. The, you talked about containment. He got around the left side and had open turf in front of him. I don't know. I don't know if he was touched. I don't think he was. We'll find out here, but... You know, they, they list Ethan Clark, 6'1", 200 pounds, and you're right, just off the left edge. There's, there's the hole, and he's off to the races. You're right. He never got a hand laid on him. Nope. And he's been doing this all season long. 78-yard touchdown run for Ethan Clark. Ball's down, kick is up by number three. 30, Eddie Langton, and we played 51 seconds. It's now seven to nothing, Clarkston. Big play, big play capabilities on the Clarkston side. Yep. And you know, when you, when you when you go in and look at a, a evaluate, you scout you scout teams. When we prepare for for games like this, those are some of the things we're looking at. You, yeah. you, you look at what are the strengths of Clarkston versus the the strengths of. Of, of Lake Orion and vice versa. And uh, one of the things that we, again, we, we talked about just briefly in the keys yeah. of the game is, is you got to stop the big play. Yeah. And we've seen that, that big play, two plays into the game. Our first quarter is underwritten by Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. 
For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. And the scoreboard for the first half of this game is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. The full-service financial institution serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 814-4000 or stop by at 350 North Park Boulevard in Lake Orion. I mean, you know they were focusing on Clark all week long. Last week against Stony Creek, he had a 37-yard touchdown run and a 55-yard touchdown run. So obviously they saw that on tape, and uh, he's he's been talked about for, for many years now in, in that Clarkston backfield. Jason Zavisky kicks off, taken on the six. Up over the 20, breaks it outside to the 37-yard line. Goes Darren Jones. Good kickoff return for the Dragons. They'll take over first and 10. That's exactly what Lake Orion needs to, you know, again, I, I hate to say momentum two plays into the game, but but you're on homecoming. There's a lot, lot of excitement going on in two plays in. You're down seven. Uh, nice start for the Dragons on the special team side of the ball. Best thing to do is answer a score with a score. Dragons in a tight formation. Robeson, the lone setback. Around the left side goes Darren Jones. He got maybe a yard. It'll be second down. Dragons going hurry up. Dorian Hill split wide right, motion this side. Billy Roberson up the middle, gets near the 40, and it'll be third down. They're going to mark him just short of the 40-yard line. That's one thing Lake Orion's got to do tonight is get Billy Roberson on track. He 25 yards total rushing last week for Roberson. So third down, Dragons go double wide, double slot. And handoff on the reverse to Raymond Payne. Sniffed out real quick. Stevens on the tackle for Clarkston. So it'll be fourth down. Caleb Jones comes in to punt. And we're trying to see who's deep for the Wolves. Number six, Jeshua Williams, number five. Thank you, Chris. Taken on the 25-yard line. Breaks it upfield over the 40, and a flag comes flying in as Desmond Stevens is taken down. We've got two flags out between the 35 and the 40-yard line. Now both of them are at the 35. We'll see what... Referee Chris Lund has to say. Penalty on Jack Gosder. That'll back him up to the 24 yard line where Clarkson will take over first and 10. Mike Hine leads him out. Veteran quarterback. He's been he's been starting a quarterback for a couple three years. Drops to pass. Look. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Aiden Kurgis. And just let him a little too far. Let him too far, and you know. Number 20, Caleb Jones was sitting on top of that route, so he's he, he in good good shape. But but you know, Heim's not a, Heim's not a, a, a big kid. He's only 5'11", one's listed at 5'11", 160. Not a big kid, but uh, super talented, super athletic. So second and down, down, they come out trips right now, motion far side. And back this way, Ethan Clark, trapped in the backfield. He's going down. Who was back there? Everybody was back there. A swarm of green shirts. 
Chris Hargett led the charge and cleaned up James by pa James Patterson. Absolutely. One, two, three, four, five, about six guys there. And that's what you've got to do with them. You've got to swarm. You know that most of the time Ethan Clark's going to get the ball. So third down and 14. Heim looking, flushed, throws, incomplete, intended out on the right flat for number for Cole Church, number 21, and it'll be fourth down. Yeah, good defensive stance by the Dragons. Caleb Jones drops deep. Two incompletions behind that time, but you know, that's what you, you gotta do. You, you gotta try to pick your poison in terms of what you wanna do. Do you wanna let them beat you on, on the ground or you wanna let Hine beat you in the air? Gavin Pate is back deep to punt it away. High kick hits at midfield and kind of takes a sideways bounce. It'll be downed at the 47 yard line where the Dragons will take over in good field position, first and 10. Once again, replays for this game are sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets with two convenient locations in the Orient area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. Visit their website, jetspizza.com. Dragons come out, trips to the right, single wide left. Toss back, Raymond Payne over midfield. Into Clarkston territory, down at the 30. They're marking him down at the 26 yard line. Good run on first down. Good explosion, yeah, good explosion upfield by Payne. Payne had Lake Orient's first touchdown last week, a 75 yard touchdown run, and he's tucking that ball in the outside arm, following Roberson and others up upfield. Well done, well done. Maybe a little bit more patient, maybe utilize yeah. Roberson there, but, but nice run that time. Trips to the left this time. Robeson up the middle, gets a couple. It'll be second down inside the 25 yard line at the 23. So far we've now seen a big play on either, either side, side of the football. Yeah. Big play again, considered 20 yards or more. So second and seven for the Dragons. Trips left, single wide right. T.R. Hill up the middle, breaks a tackle, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. How about the fake by Hill? He froze the defender coming in the hole. He froze him, He's, and that, that, that little hesitation allowed Hill to get up and inside and into the end zone. At, well, at first it looked like a busted play. You see it right there, there's the fro freeze yeah. right there. He freezes number 53, Nick Wazenko and uh, finds his way into the end zone. Nice run by T.R. Hill. Will Patterson in for, er, in for the extra point. Will Hoffman. Kick is good, 7.37 to go in the first and we're tied at seven. You know, thanks to Orion Neighborhood T Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High, Sport, High School Sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and much more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the Lake Orion High School program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. And we have some of those young gentlemen in the booth with us tonight and many more up overhead. Braving the cold. 
three weeks ago we were in shorts here. Yeah, things have changed. It's Michigan. Hoffman. Ball's fumbled into the end zone. That's a touchback. It'll come out to the 20, first and 10. Four possessions, two punts, two touchdowns. Yep. I mean, we're only, uh, we're not even five minutes into the game. Big play, big play after big, big play. play. And as you alluded to in the pregame, yeah, this team has scored a lot of points, but they've given up a lot too. Absolutely. Twins left a double wide double slot for Clarkston. Motion this side. Ball's on the ground. Dragons pick it up. Let's see what they call it. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Rolling. Matt Rowland. Hind bobbled the snap and never really got control of it. Rowland scooped and scored. Yeah, no, and that's a situation where he didn't. He, the, the, the ball gets on the hip, and Hind, I thought he was going to fall on it right there, but it pops out once. Once Rowland picks it up. Yeah. Alec Fisher is the one who hit Hine when Hine was on the ground, and then that ball popped up. Roland picks it up and takes it in for a touchdown. Bill Hoffman on for the extra point. Ball is down. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 7.27 to play here in the first. Dragons are up by seven. <laughs> no. how, how about that? <laughs> how, yeah, how about that is right. 14-7. Well, we knew that this, yeah, it's Clarkston Lake Orion. Anything has happened and anything will happen. <laughs> but did you think there would be 21 points in the first uh, five minutes, four no. minutes and 33 seconds? No. No. Amazing. Well, that's, that's exactly what Lake Orion needs. I mean, a defensive score, an offensive score, a defensive score. And it's those things. I said yeah. earlier, um, you know, in the three losses, Lake Orion's turned the ball over. In the three wins, they have not turned the ball over. Yep. Clarkston um, turns the ball over there. We'll see what, uh, what transpires moving forward. But uh, great start by the Dragons. Ryan Rector and Kean Lavelle are back deep for the Wolves. Will Hoffman to kick it off. End over end kick into the end up. Oh, he's bringing it out. He caught it on the goal line. Who's got it? It's that they did a, a reverse. And Cole Church brought it out. And they're going to mark him down at the 20. It looked like the returner caught it a step into the end zone. But I think they're ruling that his momentum momentum took him back in so he is able to bring it out so double wide double slot for Clarkston Hind from the gun back looks got pressure throws sets up a screen to Ethan Clark he's got a first down close to the 40 and we have a flag down. I don't see where it was thrown. 22 yard line right there. Yeah, there it is, yep. they are gonna wave it off. <laughs> I don't wanna say anything, but it sounds like a game I saw this past weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. No comment. Yeah. It's, maybe I did comment. <laughs> yeah, you have to be impartial on those things. Okay, first and 10 for Clarkston from the 33 yard line. Cole Jarvis comes out in a slot left. Motion this side, taken and dropped at the 35 yard line is number 21, Cole Church. And Jones dropped him. 
So two yards on the carry, second and eight. Yeah, Jones doing a nice job from a safety yes, spot coming up and knocking out the legs of Church. And on some of these, when you've got a back like that, you sometimes you've got to go low. You can't tackle Ethan Clark up high. Clark gets the ball. Springs forward for a few more yards. He's close to or has a first down Boy, at the 43. Three yard line. Yeah, Jones wrapped up. Uh, Jones had uh, had Clark around the neck, and boy, I thought his knee went down, yeah. but they didn't call anything. It looks like he he wrapped him up around the neck, but he squatted down. Knee never touched, and he kept going. Joey Bruno finally able to secure the tackle, but not before it's first and ten for Clarkston. Twins right, single wide left. Clark up the middle for about four. It'll be second down. DeGraff and Reed on the tackle for the Dragons. Yeah, speaking of DeGraff and Reed, he had 13 tackles last week against yeah. West Bloom. A really nice defensive night for him individually. Not necessarily a de team defensive, defensively, but him yes. specifically. Was in on a lot of plays, obviously. Second and six. Backs in an offset eye. Hein rolling, rolling, looks. Th caught in Dragon territory at the 38 and taken up to the 38-yard line. It'll be first down Clarkston. Yeah, Hein did just enough to attack the edge or get around the edge and attack the line of scrimmage, draw that defender up, and he was able to find Cozen a big target at 6'6", 230 for the first down. Trips to the right. Backs in an eye. From the gun, Clark on the carry. Cuts it inside and brought down with an ankle tackle by... Joey Bruno, and he was on his way to pay dirt again. You could just see the, the, the vision and the cutback ability, and boom, right there's a cut, boom, there's a cut. Look at that. He, he, he doesn't need much of a gap to find, but he, he, he's able to find. He's always yeah. keeping that head and, eye, head and eyes up and down field. Uh, nice back we're seeing here tonight. So first and 10 from the 15. Clark again, tripped up as he crosses the 14 and is dropped at the 11. So it'll be second down and six. 4.10 to go here in the first. Clarkston comes out with trips to the right. Backs in an eye. I'm from the gun. Look like they're misaligned. A little confusion out there. Yeah, there is. And they got to call a timeout. Timeout. Yeah, Church and, and Cozen didn't know where to be, whether Cozen was in the, in the uh, at tight end or should be in the slot or wherever. So better get it right than, uh, than take the delay. <laughs> You know, Orion Neighborhood Television and the Lake Orion High School Dragon Broadcast Program have partnered to produce live streams of dozens and dozens of Dragon sporting events throughout the year, including tonight's game. You can watch games live or on demand, plus they are on our channel. Look for us on Comcast Channel 22 if you live in the Lake Orion area, and Channel 99 on AT&T U-verse. You can also find Orion Neighborhood Television on Roku. Live stream subscribers have access to countless other games from around the OAA, the state, and the country. Half of the revenue from online streaming subscriptions goes back to the Lake Orion High School broadcast program. Learn more about our upcoming live schedule at www.dragonbroadcasting.com.
Org. So second and six for Clarkston from the 11. Handoff around the right side and taken down is Cole Church, number 21. Guess who? DeGraff and Reed again. Yep. DeGraff and Reed on In the there tackle. On the stop, he's fired up. Just defeats the block, and yeah. Yep. And he and James Patterson both cut through. Did a it, nice job of extending that play, not yes. north and south, but to, to, towards the far sideline. That's what you got to do. Make that back run horizontally, not vertically towards the end zone. So third and 10 from the 15. Trips right, twins left. Handoff. Clark, touchdown. He came across on the jet sweep, took the handoff, and was able to pick his way through the dragon line into the end zone. Yeah, he, he, his, his flows going this way provide a little fake going back the other way, and then he just... He doesn't need much of a hole he to get through. He's a good back. Yes, he if is. If you haven't figured that one out already. <laughs> Number 30, Eddie Langton, is on for the extra point. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 2.53 to go in the first. We're tied at 14. And this has been a good game so far. Good game, big plays, turnovers, uh, defensive scores, uh, you name we've, it. We've had it all. Let's go. It's, it's, uh, let's hope it continues that way, unlike a uh, NFL game last night that uh, didn't you know, have any touchdowns in it. I was here for the Powder Puff game, and I did not see the game. It's just as well you didn't it's just see as it's well, just as huh? well you didn't. It went overtime. 12 to 9. Really? The, Col the Colts beat the Broncos. Oh my. So. <laughs> and the bad part is if you wanted to watch it, you had to subscribe to Amazon Prime. Yep. What'd they say? 78 million to bro for Amazon to broadcast that yeah. game, that one game alone? <laughs> I think it was 78. So Dorian Hill and Raymond Payne will drop deep for the Dragons. And number 91, Aiden O'Neill, a freshman kicker, will kick off for Clarkston. But if you want to watch these games, you just ONTV. Come on out right? to yeah, ONTV, subscribe, yep. or better yet, come on out to Dragon Stadium. Nothing like the atmosphere here. The moon over there to the east. Yep. O'Neill approaches. Short kick taken at the 10, bobbled, picked up. Coming up through the middle and dropped at the 25 yard line is Darren Jones. And the Dragons will take over first and 10 from that spot. That last play, uh, that last drive, excuse me, 81 yards, nine plays, two minutes and 53 seconds. We have a new stats person here tonight doing a wonderful job. Allison's taking the night off. Dragons come out, trips to the left, single wide right. Robeson alongside T.R. Hill in the gun. Robeson around the left side, breaks it close to the 40. He's going to be down at the 39. Or I'm sorry, the 34. It'll be second down and one. Dragons hurrying it up to the line of scrimmage. TR goes under center. And we're going to have a false start penalty. 
against the Dragons. So that'll back them up five. It'll be second down and six. Roberson comes into tonight, 798 yards on the ground. Lake Orient's leading rusher, averaging 133 yards on the ground per game. That's pretty good. We have another marker down. These last two uh, plays have not been very good, though. No, they called an illegal snap. On Alex Russell, the center. So now it's second and 11 from the 19. It's not from the 19, it's from the 24. Robeson bottled up, and he's going down for a loss. The quarterback running back mesh there is what uh, disrupted everything and allowed the Wolves to get there defensively, but uh, they, they mixed each other up in the backfield. The handoff there was to, Dar that was Darren Jones that time. Darren Jones, yep. okay. So that timing, when that timing was off, Wolves obviously took advantage of that. Big 10 yard loss. Double wide, double slot look for the Dragons. Robeson lines up on a wing left. TR up the middle, got some running room, cuts it outside. He's going to be out of bounds about the 32 yard line, 30, yeah, 32. They're marking him out. So it's going to be fourth down. Actually, they mark him back at the 30. It's going to be fourth and five, and the Dragons will punt. Number five, Desmond Stevens drops back deep for Clarkston. Caleb Jones on the kick. High kick, taken at the 30, trying to cut across. He's going to reverse his field, and he is slips a couple tackles. He's still on his feet and will go down about the 42-yard line. He ran about 40 yards, sideline to sideline. <laughs> to get about five, huh? To get about five. Patrick Rowland on the stop. He does it defensively, he does it on special teams as well. So the Wolves will start first and 10 from their own 43 yard line with one minute and 19 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Look at number 72, Cole Dellinger. He's a big one. He's playing the left tackle spot. Clark on the carry. Gets up into Dragon territory at the 41-yard line. They'll mark him down. Up back at the 43 now. I'm just, I'm just impressed with the, the explosion by Clark. Boom. He puts that right foot yeah. in the ground. He, boom, he's getting vertical right away. Very little indecision. He doesn't, like we said, he doesn't need much, but once he sees that little gap, he's going to shoot it and go. He is very reminiscent of Ian Erickson, who played here a number of years ago, went on to star at Eastern Michigan. First and 10. Clark on a reverse, coming around this side, got an opening and tripped up. Nice play by Pat Rowland. Well, that's just it. You've got to you've got to be so considerate of Ethan Clark that the ball flowing his way, and he comes back yeah. to reverse the other way. Um, nice play design by Clarkston that time. Roland once again on the tackle to trip up. So another first down, first and ten for Clarkston, as we're under 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Not much breeze tonight. Flag pretty much hanging limp in the northeast corner of the end zone. Handoff up the middle. Clark is stoned after a gain of about three. And that will end out 
a very entertaining first quarter of football. We've played one, and we're tied at 14. And make sure you go mobile with Orion Neighborhood Television anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. Orion Neighborhood Television, working to bring Lake Orion to the world. We talked about this being a big game in the OAA Red. Uh, West Bloomfield right now, 13, nothing over Oxford. I don't understand what happened. I thought Oxford was going to make, you know, be more competitive this year than they have been. I, I, again, I, I think it just goes back to it just... You got West Bloomfield. You got Clarkston. Yeah. You've got Rochester Adams. And you got Lake Orion. I just like yeah. the of the six teams in the division. Yeah. Yeah. Rock, and, Oxford's one and five right now, but everyone else is five hundred and above. We've we've said it for years that that this red division is just a dog fight. At some and, point. Yeah. It is, yeah. it is. Some teams gotta be that team that doesn't win yeah. many games, right? Yeah. Trips to the right side. I'm rolling, looking, throws, overthrows. Number 21, Cole Church. Yeah, that ball sailed on Hine, but I you know, I think it was, again, I, he wasn't able to get and turn his shoulders towards the line of scrimmage because DeGraffin De Reed's putting the pressure on him. Yeah, I mean, DeGraffin was still a couple yards behind, but... He, Graffer was forcing him to the Lake Orion sideline as opposed to up the field. That's why that ball sailed on him. Because he was open. His receiver was open. So it's third down and seven for the Wolves from the Lake Orion 27-yard line. Trips right. Backs in an offset eye in the backfield. Handoff, Clark. Around the side, breaks a tackle in the 10 to 5. He's down at the 1. And it's the same thing, Chris. Once he gets vertical and turns his speed on, he's broken a lot of tackles. And you think you got him, and you make the dive for him, and he's just not there. He speeds, and he runs. I mean, he runs hard and physical which is what you want out of your feature back. That's why he's your feature back. Who's going to get the ball here? Uh, let me think. Hine. Oh, Hine <laughs> runs it around the right side in for the touchdown. But that's the threat. I mean, everyone yeah. thought Ethan Clark was going to get that ball. Yes. And when you've got a player uh, uh, you know, like, like Hine, who's elusive and can do those things, you know, Hine can score too, and obviously he did just there. Yep. So Clarkston scores here in the early moments of the second quarter. And Eddie Langton is in to attempt the extra point. Hine is the holder. Ball is down, kick is up. And the kick is good, 11-22 to go here in the second quarter. It's now Clarkston 21 and Lake Orion 14. Six yard play, or six, I'm sorry, six yard, let me say that again. Six play drive, 57 yards, time of possession that time. Uh, if I can do my math, uh, one minute and 57 seconds. Yep. Didn't take long. But, and I didn't get a chance uh, to talk to Coach Pinter before the game, but it's going to be very similar to what I asked, or, you know, what I talked with Coach Petrito at Rochester Adams. They have been in a lot of shootouts. Like you mentioned, they've given up almost as many points as they've scored. 
Right, 197 points scored to 171. So yeah, you're right. Um, it looks like uh, this is going to be another one of those shootouts that they've played in this year. And I'm sure Coach Pinter would say the same thing Coach Petrito did. I don't like shootouts. <laughs> But they like them if they win. They like them if they win, absolutely. So Aiden O'Neill will kick off the freshman kicker. Puts his foot into it, high short kick. Taken on the 10, Raymond Payne up over the 20 to the 30 yard line before he's brought down. The Dragons will take over first and 10. So the Dragons are gonna look to put a drive together. De definitely gonna have to, uh, for obvious reasons, but you know, first drive, a punt, touchdown, second drive, the third drive, a punt, so. Um, it's um, to play this uh, high scoring game with this high scoring uh, offense uh, you're going to have to counteract and you, you don't want to get too far behind so the ability to sustain a drive move the ball downfield and again keep that Clarkston offense off the field is critical I think here double wide double wing look motion this side handoff Raymond Payne he stood up at the line of it was a yard back from the line of scrimmage and taken backwards. It'll yeah. be a one yard loss. Yeah, sophomore Brady Beck was in there on the stop that time. And loss of one yard to the 30. You can see Beck coming up from a safety spot right there and finds his way. Boom, right there. Nice yeah. form tackle. Absolutely. It doesn't end up going down, but uh, forward progress was stopped for a one yard loss. So second and 11. Motion this side, TR throws it out on the flat. And Darren Jones tried to find an opening, got forward for a couple of yards, but it still, it's, it ends up being no gain. It's one of those plays where you try to get your playmakers one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback and Defender does a nice job of forcing him back inside to where all the wolves are flowing. And guess what? That's what he did. It doesn't get beat outside. Quarterback did a nice job of forcing him back inside. Uh, no gain on the play. So third down, pain in motion. TR back, looks, and he's down. Number 54, Jamel McKinney. Drop T.R. Hill for a loss. It's going to be fourth and 18. T.R. could just never see anybody open downfield to be able to get that ball off. Protection was fairly good. He steps up in the pocket or steps to his left, but it was the pressure from the right side of the pocket that finally got to him. We didn't get the punter out there. And he's going to have to snap it in a hurry. We're down to six on the play clock. Low kick. Takes a dragon bounce and comes to rest about the just shy of the 40-yard line where Clarkston will take over first and 10 with 8.58 to go. And you looked at that last play that the back kept his feet moving. He did not stand there flat-footed. He was able to do whatever TR was going to do. He was going to go with him, was able to bring him down for the loss. So Clarkston takes over first and 10. They're up 21 to 14 on homecoming 2022. Rochester Adams 17, Stony Creek 0. The other two teams that are tied for first place in the OAA Red. Rochester Adams and West Bloomfield. Hine, pitch back. Oh, They're going to throw oh. it. Caught. That was a direct Th snap. That was a wildcat. 
direct snap to Ethan Clark, who then pitched it to Hine. And got it to Cole Jarvis down to the 10-yard line. Yeah, the direct snap. There's oh, Hine moves out of the way. Direct snap to Clark. Pitch to Hine. Hine has all the time in the world. Throws up top. Again, there, there's the threat of Clark. The threat of Clark. The defense is watching and forgot about the, the, the wide out going deep. Hine, Clark, up the middle. Jammed up inside the five yard line. It'll be second down. And give Joey Bruno a lot of credit because he got over there in a hurry to bring him down. That's what Pinter said about, you know, he's talked about his, his quarterback. Kind. He says he's a leader on the offense. He runs the show. He's got great command of what we do. And other than that one play where he turned it over yep. and Rowan picked it up to score, uh, he has done just that. He showed great command of the offense, key piece of the team. That's why he's the team captain. Second down and four from the four. Handoff on the sweep and in for the touchdown is number number five, Desmond Stevens. On the sweep. And he's a big guy, too. Desmond Stevens. Yeah, 6'3", 205. So you got him, 6'3", 205. You got Clark, 6'1", 200. So Eddie Lawton in for the extra point. Ball's down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 7.48 to go in the second quarter. Clarkston increases their lead to 28 to 14. Clarkston's scoring drive for 10 seconds. 60 yards. Yeah, he just came across on a sweep and cut it upfield. Yeah, and that was, and you saw Ethan Clark there being the lead block yeah. on that particular play. So when you can offensively have multiple, multiple threats, um, we've got Hein, we've got Cl Hein, we've got Clark. Uh, you saw, you saw Cole Jarvis catch yeah. a ball deep. You, you saw their big tight end Brady Cozen catch a ball. I mean, they've got weapons offensively, and that's why they're able to to put the points yeah. on the board like they have this season. And this is homecoming week. We had the homecoming parade downtown on Tuesday. Last night, we had the annual Powder Puff game, and the seniors defeated the juniors 27-7. to And tonight, we have the annual homecoming game. You called that game last night, I called you? that game last night. It was a spirited affair. Did you, uh, rosters I heard were rather large. 144 <laughs> players for the seniors and 96 for the juniors. It took me a while to get my numbers straight. It's kind of hard looking when you see somebody wearing number 113. <laughs> yeah. High pooch kick and caught by Nick Eaton. And he made a heads up play to call for the fair catch. And the Dragons will take it first and 10 from the 27. That, that, that Clarkson drive, three plays, 60 yards, one rush of 50 yards, time of possession that time, one minute and 10 seconds. That's offensive efficiency. Ray, Raymond Payne comes around the right side, and we got a flag down at the 23-yard line. Holding on the Dragons. And that's going to be a spot foul and will be marked off from the 25. So it is going to repeat first down and it'll be 22 yards to go. And those are the things 
you just can't do you, you you can't beat yourself no you, you can't beat yourself and and uh those are little things that add up makes it very difficult you're not only you're playing against a very good football team but now you're playing against yourself yeah tr cuts it outside he's got some running room Look at this. Look at him nice go. Nice block downfield. Touchdown Lake Orient Dragons. T.R. Hill 78 yards. Wow. Get him on the edge. Get him in open space and he's going to go and you saw it right there. Nice cut back in there. Nice right block there. on the edge. Nice block right there by Brandon Nupchik. And then also downfield, these touchdown blocks we talk about by the backs, the wide Billy receivers. Billy Roberson. Yeah, Raymond Payne down there as well. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Go celebrate that one. That was pretty. Ball is down, kick is up. And the kick is good. 7.16 to go. Dragons close it within seven. Just a shootout the OK Corral. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, is right. Wow. Hey, be sure to tune in to replays of your favorite games right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Like this one. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m., and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand, www.orionontv.org. We got a long way to go, but oh this, boy. this is becoming, at least as of right now, 716 in the second, this is an instant classic. Absolutely. <laughs> Hoffman approaches, kicks it off. High kick down to the five. Coming up, jammed up and down at the 24 yard line. Is Keenan Lavelle. So Clarkston will take over first and 10 from their own 23 yard line. 7.08 to go. Ethan Clark uh, had came into the game needing 300 yards to become the Wolves' all time leading rusher, and uh, he had over 120 yards in the first quarter alone. You know, that's amazing. You look at some of the rushers that Clarkston has had over the years. And he's done a great job. Hine on the carry. Gets about six or seven. They're going to mark him down on the 31. It'll be second and three. Hine on the keep, and I'd, I'd follow Dillinger up the up the middle as well. Number yeah. 72, listed at 6'4", 300 pounds. I think he committed to Michigan State, did he? I believe. His brother is at, L Garrett is at LSU. So second down, and they're calling it two. Trips to the right. And Ethan Clark again. And he's down over the 40 to about the 43. And that's what you've got to, you've got to tackle him low. You aren't gonna go for his midsection and try to bring him down. Yeah, Dillinger pulled around the outs from his left tackle spot and uh, Knocked Chris Hargett down, and Nathan Clark followed uh, followed him that up there upfield for the first down. Trips right. Clark again gets jammed up after he gains about five. It'll be second down. 
He came into the game tonight, Ethan Clark, 3,728 yards rushing. He was 199 behind Ian Erickson. That's amazing. And they've all been within the last 10 years. Ian Erickson was 2011 to 2013, correct. Yeah. So second and four, twins to the right, single wide left. Handoff coming around the end, and a flag flies as Cole Jarvis goes down. I think they're going to get uh, number three, Aiden Kurgis, with the hold. We'll see what referee Chris Lund has to say about it. Number three, good call, Chris. They, they, the game of football does need more officials. Should I go back down on the field? Absolutely. After, after making that call from Absolutely. up here? Absolutely. You know, <laughs> and there was an article in, I believe it was the Detroit News the, last week, about the need for officials at all levels, in all sports. You're right. Absolutely. And if you're a former former player who still wants to say yeah. stay close to the game get involved absolutely trips to the right on second down Ethan Clark jammed up near midfield it'll be third down they're going to call him down right at the 50 so it'll be third and two as we approach 4.30 to go here in the second quarter, Clarkston up by seven. I misspoke earlier. Uh, Ethan Clark, I said, needed 300 yards in this game to, uh, to break the all-time record. He needed 200 yards, and I believe, uh, it's not official, but I believe he does have over 200 yards rushing so far in this first half. Third down and two. Ethan Clark breaks through, got the first down. Kept the legs churning, and you know, you've got to get them low. You've got to get them early and low. Just Patterson, if he just closes down a little quicker, yeah. you make that play in the backfield, or at least at the line of scrimmage and not pass the first down. It's got to close quicker. And Clark is 6'1", 200, and it's a very solid 200. So first down, Heim back, looks, throws, complete, out on the flat, and Trey Pakmara took, out, took Cole Church right out of bounds after maybe a one-yard gain. It'll be second down. Stops the clock with 3.26 to go. We will have our usual homecoming ceremonies at halftime. The homecoming court. And Clarkston comes out with trips right, twins left on second down. Empty backfield. Hine looking, throwing. Oh, yes! Kick off! DeGraffin Reed. Picked off by DeGraffin Reed. He takes it in for the touchdown, and we're going to be tied. Caden DeGraffin Reed on the pick, and he read it and grabbed it. He did it. You know, behind pump fakes, and the hesitation allowed DeGraffin Reed to close on the ball, intercept it, and take it to the house. Let's see it here. The pump fake right there. Kind of hesitation, and that the the Graffin Reed didn't bite on the pump fake. He read the front shoulder of, of Heim all the way, and go celebrate, son. Nice job, dra Dragons. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Ball is down. Flag down. Kick is up. And the kick is not going to count. 
Let's see what we got. They're going to replay the point after. Two defensive touchdowns for the Dragons in the first yes. half. One on a fumble recovery return and one on an interception return. So Will Hoffman will try it again. Ball's down, kick is up, and the kick is good. Hey, we're tied on homecoming. 28 all with 3.15 to go here in the second. And did you know that Orion Neighborhood Television has its very own internet radio station? You can create your own podcast or radio show or sign up to become a DJ. For more information on the radio station, give us a call at 248-393-1060. So, don't go away from your, if the dog's got to go out, wait till halftime. <laughs> We will use our first half sponsor after the kick. We'll do our first quarter sponsor, who will also be our second quarter sponsor. So Will Hoffman will kick off. Approaches, kicks it off. Short kick taken at the 10, up to the 20, breaks through to the 30, and down about the 31-yard line. This quarter is underwritten by Jets Pizza, with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. 14 straight for Lake Orion to tie it. Three minutes to go and here in the second. Handoff. Clark up the middle for a couple. Dragons jammed up and brought him down after a two-yard gain. It'll be second and eight. As we approach 2.45 to go here in the second quarter. Lake Orion's got to be thrilled to be at this stage at this point of the game. Absolutely. Punted the ball three times his first half and really have taken advantage of those miscues from Clarkston. Hine back looking. Got pressure. Going to run it. Breaks a tackle. Got a first down. Cuts it outside. He's got more inside the 30 and brought down at the 25. Nothing opened up, so he tucked it and ran it. Nothing opened up, but it should have been closed back at about around the 40-yard yeah. line here. You see Hines got time, and he gets forced out of the pocket by Sheffield. Tackle right, right there. He splits the defenders right there, and there's a cutback right here. It should have been. you got to track the back hip of that ball carrier so that doesn't you don't yeah. allow the cutback. But when you over-pursue, the cutback happens, and that's exactly what Hines did right there. Caleb Jones did a good job just to grab a shoelace and bring him down. Clark coming around the right side, trying to cut it back upfield, and he's dropped at the 19. Gain of five. It'll be second down as we close in on 130 to go here in the first half. Clarkston, twins left, single wide right. Heim rolling left, looking, throwing, caught. And it's going to be enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal at the 10. 
Nice throw by Hine. He, he threw it to where no one else but Kurgis could catch it. Low and to the outside. And plenty of for the first down. Perfect ball. Nice effort. So first and ten. Ethan Clark coming around the right side. Picks his spots down at the three. It'll be second down as we're inside a minute. Forty-five on the game clock, thirty on the play clock. Second and goal. Twins left, single wide right. Hind from the gun. Clark up the middle, touchdown. Made it look easy. He was in standing up. And he was an he was upright on that one. He just used sheer leg power to get in. This reminds me of while I wasn't there, I did review it and watch it. This reminds me exactly of the Clarkston Rochester Adams game. Yes, that game was televised on Bally, and I remember watching that, and it was just a back and forth affair. 40, it was 42 38 at half yeah. that game. And Clarkston ended up beating Rochester Adams 45 35. So. They obviously in that game made some adjustments at halftime to yeah. allow to allow uh, Rochester Adams only seven in that second half. I'm sorry, 38. I said I misspoke. There is 42, 38 at half. We have an unsportsmanlike conduct on the Dragons, which will be enforced on the kickoff. So, so Eddie Langton is on for the extra point. Heim holding. 25.6 seconds left to go here in the first half. Ball is down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. Clarkston takes the lead again, 35 to 28, in the waning moments of the first half. So if you're the Dragons, you just take what you can get on the kickoff and go into the locker room. You know, six play drive, um, 69 yards, a big play of 41. Halftime we'll do the stats and, and, and figure out how many big plays Clarkston has had in the first half. Uh, one for 78, Coach one Bell. for 23, one for 26, one for 50. Coach Bell is out talking to referee Chris Lund probably about what happened on that that penalty at the end of the touchdown run. So Clarkston will kick off from the Lake Orion 45 yard line. So, if he kicks it, it'll be in the end zone. Now is the time. He pooched one earlier. And he does an onside kick, and it's recovered by the Dragons by Troy Parkmara. And the Dragons will take over first and 10 at their 36 yard line. What a, we've seen everything in this first we half have, alone. We have. <laughs> good special teams play, good defensive play, good off, I mean, you name it, we've seen it. I guess that's why, what makes homecoming so special, huh? It what's, it's what makes Clarkston Lake Orion so special. There you go. Because we've seen this many, many times. Yeah. 
T.R. Hills under center. Hand off, Billy Roberson. Breaks it outside, flag down. Yeah, they got Raymond. And Billy's down at the 42. Raymond Payne on the hold. The half cannot end on a penalty, and there's still 19.3 seconds left. So they'll back it up 10 from the 40-yard line. It'll be first and 16 from the 30. Dragons have trips to the right, single wide left. Roverson's alone back in the backfield. Billy on a handoff, over to 30, up to 35, and wrestled down at the 36. And a late flag comes in, thrown by the side judge, and it's going to be against Clarkston. Seven seconds left in the half. And we'll see what the call is. Starting to get a little chippy out there, yeah. possibly. Personal foul on Clarkston, number 38, Colin Cortman. So that sets the ball at the Clarkston 49, and Lake Orion's going to take a timeout. They reset the clock to eight. Now it's nine seconds. Yeah, this has been a very entertaining first half. And again, at halftime, we will have the Lake Orion Marching Band, the Homecoming Court, all the things associated with, with halftime. OAA Red scores West Bloomfield 27, Oxford 0. Last score I had, uh, Rochester Adams 24, Stony Creek 0. Some other OAA scores, uh, Troy 21 over Royal Oak 0. Twins left, or double wide, double wing look for the Dragons. Raymond Payne in motion far side. TR's back, and he's going to go down, and that'll do it for the first half. We played a very entertaining first half. The Clarkston Wolves lead the Lake Orion Dragons 35-28. to You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Halftime is underwritten by Malasha's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. The Malasha's family, the Malash family has been serving Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1950s. Give them a call at 248-393-2222 or stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road, Lake Orion. We'll be right back. ON TV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ON TV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ON TV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. As we prepare for our halftime performance tonight, we want to remind our community this week's homecoming theme was Greek Gods, and we spent the week kicking off Sunday with our parade and activity night with events throughout the week as our hypnotist, our powder puff game, today's amazing pep assembly, tonight's halftime extravaganzas, and tomorrow's culminating dance, where 1,600 dragons will be in the dragon's house 
having a great time. Let's begin our presentation tonight with our court members. Starting off with the class of 2024, representing the junior class this evening, please welcome Farah Kosal. Farah is the daughter of Jennifer and Chuck Kosal. She's a competitive dancer, a proud dragon cheerleader, the representative on the Oakland Activities Association. She is glad to be representing the junior class tonight as the elected member of the class of 2024. Please welcome Farah Kosal. And our representative from the junior class tonight is Dominic Novak. Dominic is a member of the varsity football team and is currently in the locker room planning his revenge. Dominic is the son of Larry and Michelle Novak. He is a football and lacrosse player at Lake Orion High School. He's a member of the unified basketball team and a member of the leadership class. Shout out to Dom as he's in the locker room tonight. Our senior representatives, please welcome Avery Case. Avery is the daughter of Luann and Doug Case. She plays on the softball team, is a member of National Honor Society, and is on the Orion Township Board of the Environmental Committee member. She's a member of our leadership class and hopes to study environmental science at the University of Vermont, Northern Michigan, or Montana State. Please welcome again Avery Case. Nick Heist is the son of Jason and Heather Heist. Nick is a member of the varsity golf team, the DECA Club, and the National Honor Society. He hopes to attend Notre Dame University and major in business. Nick has lived in Lake Orion his entire life and has been a dragon for life. Our next representative tonight is Marissa Granberry. Marissa is the daughter of Terry and Lisette Granberry. She's involved in leadership, SOS, and OWLS. After she graduates, she hopes to attend the University of Illinois Chicago and major in nursing. Everyone, a warm round of applause for Marissa. Our next representative tonight is Nicholas Eaton. Nick is the son of Darren and Rita Eaton. He is a member of our varsity football team and a varsity track and field athlete as well. He's a member of the National Honor Society and the leadership class. After Nick graduates, he hopes to attend Northwestern University and major in pre-med. Again, a warm round of applause for Nick Eaton. Our next representative is Sophie Stronick. Sophie is the daughter of Dina and Keith Stronick. After she graduates, she hopes to go to college and she is proud to be a dragon because of this amazing community. Sophie is a member of the varsity softball team. Everyone, a warm round of applause for Sophie. Our next senior representative tonight is Mr. Patrick Rowland. Patrick is the son of Michelle Rowland. He is a member of the varsity football team and hopes to continue his football career at the next level. He loves to play football and is a member of the leadership class. Please welcome Patrick Rowland. Our next representative is Grace Hensley. Grace is the daughter of Rob and Brenda Hensley. She plays club volleyball, is involved in SOS, and is a member of the leadership class. She hopes to continue her education at Michigan State University, loves the energy and pride of being a dragon, and loves to participate in student activities. Everyone, Grace Hensley. 
Our next representative is Evan Rawlings. Evan is the son of Rob and Brenda Hensley. Oh, I'm sorry, Sherry, whoop, Laura and Ron Rawlings, sorry. He plays varsity football and baseball, participates in SNHS, SOS, and is a member of the leadership class. His after high school plans are undecided, but he hopes to become a physical therapist. Evan has been a dragon his entire life and loves our dragon community. Everyone, Evan Rawlings. Our fifth representative this evening is Grace Sullivan. Grace is the daughter of Sherry and Wade Sullivan. Grace is on the Lake Orion Leadership Executive Board. She plays varsity soccer and basketball. She's part of NHS, MNHS, and SOS. Grace hopes to continue her education at Notre Dame. Everyone, a warm round of applause for Grace Sullivan. And our final member of the court tonight is Mr. Nick Noose. Nick is the son of Ken and Windy Noose. Nick participates in travel baseball and is a member of the Lake Orion Varsity Baseball team, a member of the National Honor Society. Nick hopes to continue his baseball career at the collegiate level. He's been a dragon since day one and is proud to be a dragon today. Everyone, Nick Noose. And arriving to your left, the car carrying last year's king and queen, a warm round of applause, please, for Paige Walker and Jackson Ben, our 2022 king and queen. As they approach, we'd like to let you know Paige is currently attending Arizona State University, Barrett Honors College, double majoring in music education and saxophone performance. She was a member of the Dragon Marching Band last year. Please welcome back Jackson Ben. Jackson is currently attending Kettering University, majoring in chemical engineering. Jackson was also a proud member of the Dragon Marching Band. Welcome home, Jackson and Paige. Jackson and Paige, if you'll please exit the vehicle and approach the senior court. We are ready to crown our 2022 king and queen. Ladies and gentlemen, please get your cameras ready. Jackson, will you please crown King Nick Noose? And Paige, will you do us the honors and please crown the homecoming queen, Grace Sullivan. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to all of our participants and their honors and families. We are proud to call you all dragons and we're proud that you represent us as a community in school. We're thankful for all the pride you've given us and the joy you bring. Again, a warm round of applause for all of our 2022 homecoming court members and their families. At this time, if we could exit the field, it looks like we have a football game to win. A quick shout out to all my kids in the leadership class. Mrs. Redmond and I say thank you for a great week. Go Dragons. Halftime, the Clarkston Wolves lead the Lake Orion Dragons 35 to 28 in what had been a very 
entertaining first half. And Chris, where do we start? Where do we start? Um, good question. All, all I know is that Ethan Clark running back for Clarkston, three touchdowns, one of 78, one of 15, one of two. He has 219 yards on the ground in the first half. He has become the Clarkston Wolves all-time leading rusher in school history and he needs just 43 yards more to eclipse 4,000 yards on the ground in a football career. So, uh, I'm sorry, 53 more yards to, uh, to eclipse 4,000 in his career. So, um, pretty impressive, very impressive first half. Uh, Hine with a one-yard touchdown run. Stevens with a four-yard touchdown run for Clarkston. Uh, Lake Orion. T.R. Hill, two big touchdown runs, one of 23, one of 85. DeGraffin read an interception return for a touchdown, and Roland, Patrick Roland, a fumble recovery for a touchdown. So um, 170 yards total offense for Lake Orion. Um, boy, I mean, we saw it on both sides of the field. We saw it on offense. We saw it on defense. We saw some on special teams. Uh, just an exciting first half yeah. here at Dragon Stadium. Defense scored as many touchdowns as the offense did. Yes, yes, it, yes, they yeah. do. And so Lake Orange got going to have to continue that defensive pursuit. They're going to have to, again, like we said at the outset, the keys to the game, you got to sustain drives offensively yes. to keep that Clarkston offense off the field. You see why you want to keep that Clarkston offense off the field, don't you? And as we saw, you can't just concentrate everything on Ethan Clark because Mike Hine can roll out, he can throw the ball, he can run. We saw him with a couple long runs. So, yeah, but the Dragons have stayed in it so far, and there's no reason to say that they won't stay with it in the second half in what's been a really good football game. Yeah, fun, fun to be a part of, fun to call, fun to be, I mean, just, yeah, just... Like you said many times already today, it's Lake Orion Clarkston. How many yeah. years have we been a part of this this rivalry? Oh my um, goodness! You know, you you a lot more than longer than I have, but but nonetheless, uh, uh, whether you're playing up in Clarkston, you're playing here at Lake Orion. It's 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 great to be a part of. Yeah, I I still remember very vividly being the locker room in in 19, 1986. Doug Frazier was the head coach then, and his dad, Morley Frazier, was a legendary coach in the state of Michigan, and he went in and gave the halftime talk. And I, I, there, was, there was nobody by the time Coach Frazier got done talking that didn't want to put on pads and get out on the field because he, he just, if they want to use the phrase, riled up the troops, that's what his halftime talk did. Uh, yeah, so many, many homecomings, so many Clarkston Lake Orion moments, both here and at Clarkston. Well, that's just it, oh. in the regular season and in the playoffs even, that's too. That's right. You know? These, these teams started playing in 1950, and they played to 1956, and then the Dragons went in one leg and Clarkston went in the other. They resumed play in 1977. Clarkston leads the series 33 to 23, and you brought it up earlier that that the Dragons have only won one game in the past eight, ten years since Lake Orion won the state championship in 2010. Yeah. Lake Orion has only, has only won one, and that was at Clarkston a couple, three years yeah, ago, in 2009, mm -hmm. when when Clarkston was three and six that particular year. These teams have met twice in the playoff and Clarkston won both. Okay, our second half sponsor is Smetanka Craft Shows. Run by Joe Smetanka, Smetanka Craft Shows has several craft shows throughout the year all throughout Michigan. For more information, visit their website at smetankacraftshows.com. They also have as you can see on our graphic, a presence on Facebook. Five state championships coming out of the OAA Red in Division I in the last 13 years. Lake Orion back in 2010. Yeah. Clarkston in 13, 14, and 17. They were runners-up in 18. Yep. 
Lake uh, West Bloomfield was uh, was a runner up in 17. They actually played Clarkston in the 17th. Yes. One one by a, a thrilling three to score, two. three to two, right? Three to two. And then West Bloomfield won in, in 2020. And, and Rochester Adams was the state runner up and lost to Belleville last year yeah. in 21. And it just it, get, it just goes to show you the caliber. I, we can't say it enough about the OAA, era, OAA Red. The caliber of football that we're seeing at, at, at this level is uh, maybe all these years we've been doing this, we, we're, we're spoiled, I should say. But um, boy, it's good football, I'll tell you that. And we, you know, we've we've always said it that for nine weeks during the during the fall, these teams are beating each other up. They're well primed for the playoffs. They've seen it all during the course of a year. So the Dragons will receive the second half kickoff. Raymond Payne and Darren Jones are back deep for the Dragons. And number 91, Aiden O'Neill, the freshman kicker, will kick off for Clarkston. 35-28 as we start the second half. Glad you're with us on kind of a chilly fall night here in Lake Orion. O'Neill approaches, puts a foot into it. Short kick taken on the 10 by Raymond Payne. He's up over the 20, breaks it outside, trying to break a tackle, and gets to about the 27-yard line where the Dragons will take over first and 10. things you got to watch for the second half getting Roberson some more touches some more opportunities and then and then also putting T.R. Hill in spaces and opportunities to be able to carry the ball like he did T.R. Hill two touchdown runs uh, he's, he's got over 100 yards on the ground today Dragons start out trips right toss back to Payne on the sweep breaks a couple tackles gets up over to 30 to the 31 yard line it'll be second down Cole Jarvis on the stop for Clarkston. It'll be second and seven. Nate Goring doesn't have to rush into anything. We've got to find a rhythm, find some things that work. Dom Novak split wide left. Payne goes in motion. He gets the handoff again. Got a little opening and close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. And a flag flies at the end of the play. Feed the hot hand. Find the hot hand. Feed the hot hand. They yeah. might be cool, but you got to find somebody's hot. It is close enough for a first down. It's marked at the 39-yard line. And a personal foul on Clarkston. That's going to add 15 more. That'll move it down to the 46-yard line of Clarkston, where it'll be first and 10 for Lake Orion. Raymond Payne had that last touch and had the kickoff return. He's averaging, coming into tonight's game, averaging 11-9 a carry. So that, That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> very good. You want to get, that, get him the ball. Averaging more than a first down a carry. Twins left. Gain of about one. Trying to see who had it. Billy Roberson on the carry. They're going to mark him down for no gain. And it seems like he's been zeroed in. We mentioned his, his game last week against West Bloomfield. And he's had about two or three guys on him every carry tonight. So second and nine, TR faked the toss to Roberson, took it himself and got trapped for a yard loss. It'll be third down. This is one of those situations where Lake Orion has not 
been very consistent, let's just say, passing the football this year. Yeah. Have not been very good at this. So big third down play coming up for the Dragons right now. TR goes into the gun alongside Roverson. High snap. Trying to get upfield, and he's going to be stopped. We got a flag for, in the secondary, though. Yep, another flag. Thrown by the field judge on the far side. This could be a hold against Clarkson. We'll see. Yeah, that was a play where TR was just said, look, like that was the design quarterback run. Yeah, he faked, faked the toss to Billy and kept it himself. It didn't fool anyone on the Clarkston defense. So let's check the flag out. This would be a big play if it was against Clarkston. Big, yes, it will. Big call, I should say, if it was against Clarkston. They're still having the discussion. There were two flags thrown. That's going to be a first down. Wow. So that's two big fouls against the Clarkston defense in this series. And the Dragons have a first down at the Clarkston 36-yard line. Now this opens up your play calling a little bit. Dragon set up in a double wing. Rovison's a lone back. Payne in motion far side. Rovison breaks out of it, trying to turn the corner and dropped at the 30. A good six yard run by Billy Rovison. He got free for a minute. Yeah, Adam Denver on a nice, nice job on his, from his quarterback spot. Rovison bounces it to the outside, and I thought Rovison had an opportunity to. Shake one right there, but nope. Denver trips him up, knocks him down to 30. And I got to make the mention about a Adam Denver. It's really great to say hi to his dad, former Dragon Luke Denver. TR throws, broken up, and here comes a flag. And the Clarkston coaches next to us are not too happy about that decision. Now, I, Ryan Rector was there before the ball was there. Dorian Hill, the ball was intended for Dorian Hill. Rector was, might have been a half step early, but uh, nonetheless it was there. It'll be another first down for the Dragons, their third first down by penalty on this drive. Can't quite see it on the, on the replay, but TR did a nice job of, of extending the play, getting out of the pocket and forcing that, not forcing that ball, but throwing that ball back to the middle. He ended up forcing and calling the, uh, the, uh, the pass interference. Billy Roberson inside the 10 to the 7. Call it the 8. It'll be second down and 4 for the Dragons. 8.30 to go here in the third. Dragons on the move. Dorian Hill splits wide to the right. Double wide, double wing set up. Roberson trying to break a tackle, and he's down for no gain. Maybe a yard gain. Brady Beck there in on the stop. We've called his name a couple times, a sophomore safety. So it's third and three for the Dragons. Raymond Payne in motion. He gets the carry, and he is brought down. The ball's down, and Clarkston recovers. Oh, my goodness. Desmond Stevens made that play happen. Not only did he string Payne wide, but he forced Payne to... Strip the ball out of Payne's hand. Wolves take over. Huge play by yeah. Clarkston. 
You see the replay right here. Payne's coming from left to right. Desmond Stevens does a nice job of getting his right arm yes. behind Stevens. I'm sorry, behind Payne. Behind Payne, knocks it out of his hand. Clarkson takes over at the 15. Just as a good defensive back is taught to do. So Clarkson takes over first and 10 on their own 15. Ethan Clark coming around the end, breaks some tackles, gets over the 35 to the 36. They're going to mark him down on the 35. Boy, that one hurt. That yeah. one hurt right there. 20-yard gain on first down. I think he just picks his way through. Picks his way, keeps that ball tight, uses that stiff arm, and again, runs hard. So first and 10, twins left, single wide right. Hind from the gun, Clark again, off the right side, and he's brought down at the 35. 30-yard run on first down, 30, and it's first down Clark. 30-yard run, two plays, 50 yards on this drive. He's now at 269 yards rushing this game. That doesn't sound possible. It is. We're, we're watching it tonight. Yeah, I know it. So first and 10 from the 35. Clark again up the middle gets about three. And it'll be second down. Clarkston had five big plays in the first half. They've had two this this half, first seven. That's yeah. Lake Orion is average giving up seven big plays per game. Yeah. Well, let's face it, folks. You are watching something very special in number thirty-four tonight. He is he has come in as advertised. He splits out now in a slot left. Handoff up the middle, and it's Clark again for, for a first down inside the 25. Ball fake going from left to right yeah. to, to, to Cole Church. Clark gets the ball up the middle for nine. So first and 10 from the 23. They come out trips right. Clark the lone back. And he gets the handoff and goes for a couple. It'll be second down from the 21. My question is, does, it, does, does the kid ever get tired? I don't know. It doesn't look it, like it. It does not look like it. You're right. I know the halftime was a longer extended halftime because of homecoming, but boy, oh boy, he looks like he's starting. He's as fresh as he was when we started the first, first quarter. So second down and eight. Give it to Clark again. He breaks a couple more tackles inside the 20 down to the 18. It'll be third down and about five. Yeah, we've talked a lot about him already, and well deserved. But but at the same, you know, he runs hard, he runs physical. But I, I'm so impressed with his vision, his cutback yeah. ability, and that's what that's what I really like about watching him. So third down, trips left this time. And we have a stoppage in play. False start. That'll back him up five. Yeah, Ethan Clark doesn't even look like he's breathing hard. Most backs with the, with the workload that he's <laughs> had tonight would be over sucking oxygen on the sideline. If he's not a first team all state running back this year, there's something wrong. So Clark again off the left side is taken nice down play. after a two yard gain. Good play by Pat Rowland and 
to Graffenreed. Clark gets the ball and can't, he looks like he's got the edge, but no. Oh. Smith there on the play. Yeah, Smith made the first hit. So it's fourth down and nine. Hind directing traffic. They got twins left, a tight end on the or on the right, and Clarkson's going to call a timeout and talk it over. Three twenty-five to go here in the third. Clarkston's up by seven. Remind you again that thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and much more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the Lake Orion High School program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication in bringing Dragon Sports to the world. And the world is catching a good football game tonight. Big fourth down for... So fourth and nine. Trips right, single wide left. Clark, the lone setback. Hine, back. Looking, trapped. Trying to run and down he goes. No gain, fourth down. Dragons get the ball back on downs. And how huge was that? Boy, did they need that stepped up when they needed to step up. Heck of a play. Hein just couldn't, didn't have any time, didn't find anybody out up open downfield, and turnover on downs, Lake Orion takes over. Let's give some credit to that Lake Orion secondary. That was, as they call it, a coverage sack. So the Dragons come out first and 10 from their own 23. 3.17 to go in the third quarter. Twins left, single wide right. Toss to Roberson. Breaking it outside. Got a little seam. Boy, a flag down. Very, very late. Very, very late. I... Th I think it was thrown by Gilly David, the umpire. I think it was on Dom Novak on the edge down here. Yeah, that's. Let's see if we can see, see it right here. There's the toss. Looks like he's got a seam and right. They called that. Uh, they called that on. Looks like they called that on pain. It was on pain. Yeah. Yep. So now, <laughs> Ian Locke down in the truck giving us some editorial comment. Uh, it is first and sixteen. Twins to the right, single wide left. Billy Roberson up the middle. Gets it out to the 20. Gain of four. It'll be second down. Dragons going hurry up. Raymond Payne in a slot left. Jones set up on a wing right. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you what, I couldn't see who had the ball. It was a great play fake. Yeah. 
Nice little counter but crisscross. It was taken by Darren Jones, who was lined up on the wing. And up. Flow going to the far side of the field, the inside of the handoff. Yeah. To, inside handoff to Jones. And a big first down for the Dragons. Yeah, it is a big first down. Hurry up again. Double wide, double slot look for the Dragons. Motion this side. Roverson gets nothing. Maybe a yard. They have bottled up that middle all night long. Matter of fact, it's been that way almost for both teams that everything that's been run has been run to the outside. So second down. TR being chased, and he's not going anywhere. He's going to lose yardage. That Clarkston defense got through the Lake Orion line in a hurry. Yeah, Jamel McKinney was right there, and, and TR turned a corner, and there was other Wolves there. There He should never get, get to the far side of the field, and uh, just good pressure by the Wolves that time. Brings up a big third down play for, for the Dragons. So third down and 11, a minute 10 to go here in the third. Wind is not a factor tonight. They go trips to the right, single wide left. TR back. He's going to run it. And he's going to be down short of the 40-yard line. It looked as if they were trying to set up a screen to Roberson on this side of the field. And, and uh, defender went with Roberson, and TR had to keep it in. Yep, it looked like they were trying yeah. to set it up right there, and the defender did a nice job of going with Roberson, and TR did what he he could to get any yardage. Smart play to not throw up by Hill. Play Smaka on the tackle for Clarkston. So Darren Jones in punt formation. Caleb Jones, I'm sorry. And it'll go out of bounds about the 18-yard line where Clarkston will take over first and 10, a minute 15 to go in the third. Quite a different uh, quarter so far than yeah, that first half Yeah, absolutely. We saw. Huh? Absolutely. Hey, Larry Buss and the crew at Jets Pizza, located at 1091 South Lapeer Road, have been a proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Athletics since 2009. Jets supplies catering for cast and crew. Thank you, Larry, for your continued support. It's kind of late, but give them a call at 248-814-7559 and order dinner. First and 10 for Clarkston. Ethan Clark, up the middle, <laughs> cuts it outside, breaks a tackle, gets over midfield, and down to the 45-yard line of Lake Orion. 46, 36 yards, if my math is correct. Here's the handoff again to Clark, and he just gets, there's a missed tackle right there. You got to get a hand on him. Yeah, there's another missed tackle. There's two missed tackles. He switches the ball to the outside arm so he can use his inside shoulder. There's a third missed tackle right there. Yeah, and Troy Pakmara tried to tackle him up high. You're not going to bring him down tackling him up high. So that's the end of the third quarter. It's still 35 to 28, Lake Orion, or I'm sorry, Clarkston. And to remind you again, our second half is underwritten by Smetanka Craft Shows, run by Joe Smetanka. Smetanka Craft Shows has several craft shows throughout the year, all throughout Michigan. For more information, visit their website, smetankacraftshows.com. They also have a presence on Facebook. And we'll remind you again that our scoreboard for the second half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. The full service financial institution services everyone who resides 
works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 814-4000 for more information. So first and 10, handoff off the far side to number five, Desmond Stevens. He goes for about four, it'll be second down. And our replay sponsors are Chet's Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. Well, both defensive coaches, coordinators, did said something at halftime because the defenses are stepping up and yes. playing some, some tough physical football this second half. Absolutely. Ethan Clark again coming around this side. And he's down, but he's picked up a first down at the... 34-yard line, it'll be 1st and 10 Clarkston. Doesn't this kid ever get tired? He's, uh, he's, he's rushed for 332 yards to this point in That's time. That's amazing. That is just amazing. So 1st and 10. Backs in an offset eye. Ethan Clark gets the ball on the carry. He dropped after a couple. It'll be second down. Most running backs, when they get that kind of workload, they want to go over and you know, get their breath for a minute. And he just keeps on going. Not this guy. I don't know that I've seen him off the field. I'm sure he has been, but I don't know. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like it. So it is second and eight. Eight balls on the 32-yard line of Lake Orion. Ten minutes to go in the ball game. Clark again around the right side. Flag comes in. We got a hold on. Yeah, I think so. Thrown by the referee. Holding on, Dom Kleba. So that'll back him up. It'll now be second down and 21. So... Clarkston, twins left, single wide right, backs in the eye. Hine back, looking, throwing, going deep, incomplete. Intended for Brody Coson, the 6'6 wide receiver. And believe it or not, he overthrew him. Yeah, Pacamaro in there on the stop, or in coverage, excuse me, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm through. You, again, you, you throw a ball that, and you know, you throw. Yeah, you you know why he overthrew him? Because Cozen stopped, stopped running. He yeah. stopped running. He turned around. He's back pedaling, pedaling yeah. which slows you down. He had he kept running, he would have had a completion. He would have had a completion because the ball was actually thrown at a decent spot. Yeah, he stopped and turned around to look for the ball instead of just turning his head. Hein, going the other way. Incomplete, intended for Aiden Kurgis. So now it's fourth down and 21. And Clarkson's going to punt. I know it was second and 20. I know it was third and 20. I know you're, you're, you got 20 yeah. yards to go to get your first down. But when you got a guy who's rushed for over 300 yards and you're putting the ball in the air back-to-back -back plays give him the ball <laughs> get the get the ball <laughs> that's what I think so 
Ball point. snap. Clarkston's second punt Fair of the night. Fair catch called for. It's going to roll down to the one. The Dragons are going to have 99 yards to go with 9-10 to go in the game, down by seven. Hey, be sure to tune in to replays of your favorite games right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7, Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check out our program guide on our website, orientontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand, www.orionontv.org. Double wide, double slot look for the Dragons. T.R. Hill back, he's down. Clarkston's gonna have the safety. That Clarkston defensive front was in before the offensive lineman could break break their stance. Yeah, that, that pocket just collapsed really quick. Yeah. TR didn't have couldn't do anything. So Clarkston gets two points on the safety and he'll get the ball back. Well that's what that's, we go. that's why special teams are so critical. He drops back to pass and from the backside, yep. the backside B gap, Hill couldn't do anything. That's why special teams are so critical yep. because while that was only Clarkston's second punt of the night, guess what it did? It They downed the ball at the one yard line, yep. which set up the opportunity. Uh, Coach Bell didn't think that uh, be able to run the ball out of there in that play, so they tried to pass it. Pocket collapsed, and, and they got the safety out of it. Even if they were going to do any kind of draw, they wouldn't have had time to get it off. So it'll be a free kick. Will Hoffman will kick from the 20. Clarkston drops Cole Church back deep. Yeah, we've now we've really seen it all. Both, both teams have scored on defense. Obviously big plays both on offense. Special teams has been a factor. Fair catch called for by the up back Key and Lavelle. And Clarkston will take over first and 10 from their own 30 with nine minutes to go in the ball game. Turnover is just a critical part of the game of football. Yes. And, and we talked about at the outset that every game Lake Orion's won, they haven't turned the ball over. Every yeah. game they've lost, they've turned the ball over. Yeah. They've turned the ball over once tonight. And... Uh, it matters, right? It matters. It does now, matter. Now, I say that, but yet Clarkston's lose. Lake Orion's actually winning the turnover battle because Clarkston's turned yes. it over twice. Double wide, I'm sorry, twins right, single wide left. Ethan Clark up the middle for about four. It'll be second down. Now it's one of those things where Clark Lake Orion's got to get the ball back. They got to find a way to yes. force a turnover again, whether it's fumble or interception like they've already had. Got to get it. Got to get it back and do something with it. They just had a big stop on downs, made them punt, and you know what? That's the way, as they say, the ball bounces. It went down to the one yard line. Clark again into the open field, cuts it outside. Cuts it up and taken down on a good tackle by Joey Bruno. And you notice he went low and cut him down at the ankles. But, you know, go back and watching film tomorrow. 
uh, obviously is a very good running back. Yeah. But you're going to – I don't know if the Lake Orion deep, uh, coaching staff is going to want to watch how many missed tackles there have been. Yeah. You know, and that's part of, of – but let's face it, they, they've been watching film on him since week one. So they know what kind of back he is. And you know what? I'm sure every defensive line coach and defensive coordinator that watched Barry Sanders, film on Barry Sanders for 10 years, thought they could stop him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The great ones are like that. So as a gain of four... It is second and six, and Clarkston's not going to be in any hurry to snap the ball. They'll try to run the play clock down as much as they can. Twins left, single wide right. Clark again, up the middle. Cuts it outside, breaks a tackle, and finally taken down inside the 20. by Corbin Smith. It'll be first and 10 from the 12. Another 30 yard gain, there's a missed tackle. And, and there's a, there's, and he, Smith just happened to get a shoelace. He's got 58 yards this drive alone, all 58 yards for the Wolves. Amazing. Clark again, up the middle, breaks a couple tackles, and he's in for the touchdown. Wow. His fourth touchdown of the night. From 12 yards. So if I do my math here, 4, 8, 20, 50, 70, 70 yards on the ground right there for the Wolves, 70 yards on the ground for Ethan, Ethan Clark. Clark. And that puts him over 400 yards rushing today. I've got him at tallied at 404 yards rushing. Wow. Now, I'm not official here, so the officials, the officials. No, but you went to Wisconsin Whitewater. <laughs> I trust anything you say. <laughs> and they're going for two. And they send a tackle they throw, eligible they out to... Cole. Cole Dellinger. And Coach Bell is incensed because you cannot catch a pass if you have a 70 number. Did he report? It doesn't make any difference. No. He did not have an eligible number. Unless that was a rule change that I didn't hear about. The eligible numbers are one to 49 and 80 to 99. I will have to check the rule book to see if that got changed this year. Wow. But Cole Dellinger just kind of leaked out from his left tackle position and was standing there all by himself. It doesn't make any difference, really. Instead of being 44 to 28, it's 45 to 28. Six thirty one to go in the game. I, I don't I don't know I don't know what I what well, to say. I, I, I just I know I, in the NFL you can report in as eligible. I think you can do it in college too. But as of last year it was not a high school rule. Was it changed for this year? That I will have to find out. In the meantime, Aiden O'Neill approaches to kick off. Short kick.
taken up front by Pat Rowland, and they blew him dead right away. I don't know if he called. I didn't see him call for a fair catch. We're assuming he did. So 6.38 to go. So 70-yard drive, five plays. Time of possession that time, two minutes, 31 seconds. If we get a chance to talk, talk to Coach Bell post-game, that's one of the things I want to ask him. Five big plays this half for a total yeah. of 10 this game for Clarkston. Raymond Payne up the middle. Good gain out over the 45 to the 48. That'll be a first down, Dragons. I like the way Raymond Payne is running. He, he, yeah. It seems seemingly as the season's gone on, he started to establish and get some, a little bit more confidence in, 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 in his running style. And he's running hard and he's running well. Yeah. Trips to the left, single wide right. Toss to Roberson. Trying to cut it back up, side, uh, up inside. He gets two. It'll be second down. Yeah, he could never get outside because number 11, Kavanaugh Ditton was out there. The linebacker, 6'1", 220, did a nice job of forcing Roberson back inside for a two-yard gain. So second and eight. Dragons going hurry up. Double wide, double slot. Roberson outside, breaks a tackle, got a first down over the over the Clarkston 45 to the 42. Brady, Brady back again from his safety spot was there, but Roberson ran right through that tackle and got the first down. You see it right here. Watch Brady back come from right to left into your TV screen. Roberson on the far side. Here comes Brady back. Bam, right there. But no, Roberson lowers his shoulder and back bounces right off him for a first down. Nice run by Roberson. First and 10 from the 43. And we have a stoppage of play. Coach Bell's going to take a timeout. So even though Clarkston has scored the only points of the second half, this has still been a very entertaining football game today. Absolutely. It's, 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 again, we've said it all night. It's obviously the offensive have playing well. Defensive scores on both sides. Uh, special teams work. Uh, just the big play after big play. And, and uh, it's just, I don't know. It's... It's Lake Orion Clarkston. Yeah, we said it's it, it's Friday night football. Yeah. It's it's the lights. It's the ambiance. It's the it's the bands. I mean, we say it all the time, yep. but it's you know, these nights are special. These 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 kids, uh, these families, these communities. Uh, it's there's something about it, and uh, I'm just uh, very grateful to be a part of it. And there's that little nip of autumn in the air. Yes. Tonight, trips right. TR, back, looking, trying to outrun a linebacker and does. Gets down to the 35. It'll be second down. And again, like we said earlier, that's the thing that Lake Orion struggle with when you're down like this and you need to put the ball up in the air and come back. They just haven't been able to find some right. consistent, pa a consistent passing game. And when you play one-dimensional, you're making it easy for that defense yes. to, to, to play the, what they need to do. Raymond Payne, and that was, that was a double fake, and a late flag comes in. Yeah, Payne was out of bounds, and there was a late shove, yeah. and... and uh, the Dragon sideline was clapping their hands. So we will get the call from referee Chris Lund. So that will be a first down for the Dragons at the, it's going to be marked on the 15 yard line.
So first and 10, trips left, single wide right. Toss to Roberson, trying to get a block outside, gets inside, out of bounds at the five, and another flag down. They may get Raymond Payne on a hold. They got Dom, or no. they got Dom Novak Dom on that Novak. one. Yep. Yep. He was tied up with Kavanaugh Ditton as well on the far side of the field, and the yep. side judge right there uh, threw it as soon as Roberson ran past him. So that'll come back 10. It's a spot foul. It's interesting how many holding penalties there have been tonight, yeah. and they've all been on the perimeter. Yes. They've all been there. With the old wide, what's the old wide receiver coach always say? Get your hands in, <laughs> yeah. get your hands in, get your hands in. TR drops the snap, looking, throwing. Oh, almost caught in the end zone. Intended for Dorian Hill. And just couldn't hold on to it. Hill does a nice job picking that ball up and avoiding pressure. And does a nice job also to avoid the pressure and create something. And Hill was wide open, Hill to Hill. Was not complete. Yeah, was not complete. So it is second down and 19 from the 24. 434 to go in the game. TR rolling right, looking, throwing. Complete Raymond Payne bounces off a tackle, gets down to the 20. And we have another penalty marker. Another hold in the secondary, I believe. We will check the flag. Referee Chris Lund has been getting as much air time as we have tonight. Defense, that'll be a first down for the Dragons. Oh, they're calling it still second down. Five yard penalty. The ball will be marked on the 10 yard line. Raymond Payne goes out into a slot right. Dorian Hill split wide right. Toss. What's the call? No signal. I saw the, the Dragons are celebrating. The officials, three officials are in the end zone talking about it. There is a penalty marker down. Nothing yet, even. No. Offensive pass interference on Dorian Hill. They're saying he shoved off. Ian, let's see if you have this. Oh no. TR Hill just. Boy. It sure didn't look like a push off. Where's unless unless it's just off camera here, but that's a perfect ball by T. Yes. R. Great catch by Dorian. I don't know if that left arm extended or not, but uh, that's what they called. T. R. Looking, going deep, got Dorian Hill again. Touchdown! Flag down. You can't get it done. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. I thought I saw a flag come down, but I guess not. You can't get it done the first time. Let's go back to the same play and get it done right and the second time. TR threw a beautiful yeah. ball. And that's the thing you wish you would have seen more of this yes. year, right? Yes. At least to this point in time. That's a nice ball. Nice 
Hill to Hill connection. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Connor McCartan will hold. Pat Rowland is a long snapper. Ball's down, kick is up. And the kick is good with the flag coming down after the play is over. Let's see what the flag is. It makes the score 45 to 35. Let's get referee Chris Lund's call. So, a personal foul against Clarkston, which means Lake Orion this time will kick off from the 45-yard line. And Coach Bell's down having a conference with the officials with four of them. Doug, that was a 10-play, 69-yard drive. Time of possession there, two minutes and 22 seconds. Four penalties on the play. Four penalties. Or, I'm sorry, on the drive, excuse me. So, will or the free kick or the kickoff will be done from the 45. So, I would guess this, yes, this is a situation where you're going to try the onside kick. You're down by 10 with just over four to go. Why not? The idea for an onside kick is to kick it low and get that big hop. Try to get it past the first. It's got to go 10 yards. There's, There's the, hop. the hop. Who's got it? Lake Orion. Dragons, Dragons ball. Dragons ball on the Clarkston 35 yard line. Wow. You, you called it, Doug. That was the perfect hop on the onside. It, it took a hop just before that 10 yard mark you talked about. And I, don't, I couldn't tell. I think it was Raymond Payne who tipped it at the highest point. It was like he was going up for a basketball rebound to go get it. He tipped it, knocked it down. Can't quite tell. Here's there it goes again. Right there, about eight yards away. Boom, There's the right big there. hop. Perfect. And then I think it's Raymond Payne tips it, knocks it. The ball's on the ground right there, and it looked like Pacmara picked it up. Is it number seven. So the Dragons take over. First and ten. 405 left to go. TR back to pass. Looks, throws. Got him on the post. Got a receiver. No flag. Boy, Dorian Hill was open earlier. If he would have yeah. just thrown it about a second earlier, he had, he was on top of the secondary of the Wolves. By oh, the, you know what? He couldn't quite follow through yeah. that. Defender got his hand up in TR's face. By the time the ball comes right there, he's in, he's in almost triple coverage. Just a half step. Half second earlier on the throw, that's a completion. And we're so Clarkston is going to take a timeout while everybody in the stadium stops and catches, catches their breath. We have 3.57 to go. The Dragons are down by 10 and in Clarkston territory. Clarkston has one timeout left. The Dragons have two. I gotta, I gotta check my blood pressure here. <laughs> it's Clarkston Lake Orion. <laughs> we literally have seen it all. We have. Onside kick recoveries. I don't know how many penalties. Over F 400 yards rushing. Fumbles. For Clark. Safeties. Defensive intercept. Uh, intercepts return for a touchdown. Fumble return for a touchdown. 400 yards by a running back. Again, that's not official, but that's. It's right in and around there. Double wide, double slot for the Dragons on second down. Raymond Payne inside the 30, inside the 25, down to the 20.
Dragons trying to go hurry up. First down and 10. They're going to reset the chains. Dragons trips right, single wide, or trips left. TR trying to get up the middle and is bottled up and dropped for about a two-yard loss. It'll be third down. Little quarterback. I'm sorry, it'll be second down. Tried to do a little quarterback mm -hmm. draw there, and there was just nothing there. Second and 12. TR Close. is back. Ooh, the looking, 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 throwing. Incomplete. Intended for Dom Novak and just kind of at his feet. I thought the post was early. Yeah. Or open, open early. He would have had to throw it right there, right on the spot. But, but uh, I tell you what, he, I think he does a really nice job of creating things, make, trying to make things happen. Yes. And uh, does a nice job of keeping his eyes downfield to see where his receivers are coming open if they are. And he's always got that threat to run. Absolutely, the dual threat quarterback concept, yes. TR rolling left, looks, throws, overthrows. Oh, my goodness, he had him for a moment, but not only that, he had wide open turf in front of him. Yeah, he, he immediately, after he threw that ball, put both his hands on his head and, he, his head and said, you know, he knew, he knew he overthrew him. So he Will knew. Hoffman coming out for a field goal attempt. This will be 39 yards No win tonight. Ball's down. Kick is up. And the kick is no good short. So with 2.54 to go, it is Clarkston 45, Lake Orion 35, the ball will come back out to the 20 where Clarkston will take over first and 10. And Clarkston's main objective now is to eat clock. Eat clock, keep the ball, don't for turn the ball. You know Lake Orange's going to be swarming to try to punch that ball out and rake that ball out. So Yes. Um, yes, they want to just move the ball downfield, move the chains and keep the clock going to force Lake Orange to use their final two timeouts. Do you have an idea who's going to get the ball? Uh, if he's in there, but I don't think he's in there. Oh, he's, yes, he is yeah. in there. My fault. Yeah, he's he a tailback. So from the gun, Ethan Clark on the carry, goes forward for five. It'll be second down. And the Lake Orion is going to take their second timeout. 2.48 to go. Next week, the Dragons will go down to North Farmington to take on the Raiders. Last year, uh, the Dragons went out to an early lead and North Farmington came back and beat the Dragons. Last score I had on North Farmington, they're up 17 nothing on Auburn, Auburn Hills Avondale at the half. This will be one of the crossover seasons. And then the Dragons will close out the regular season two weeks from tonight right here against Celine, one of the top programs in the state. And that's just it. Think about that, Doug. I mean, we've talked about this before, but you open up against Mac Red, yep. <laughs> you to Geisenhower, and then you end your season out of conference against Celine, and oh, by the way, in between. You got the OAA red. <laughs> yeah. So second down and five from a pistol formation. Hand off to Clark. Dodges a tackle and brought down after a one-yard gain. It'll be third down. And Lake Orion's going to use their final timeout with 2.42 to go. Negri in on the stop this time. 
Yeah, that's what, you know, there's something about, and I, I, I'm not belittling the other classes, but there's something about Division One football. No matter where you are in the state, you're going to get a game every night. There's no question. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to keep up with the scores around the state. Um, and uh, you're right. There's games, great games going on everywhere. So, I mean, whether you're here, whether you're another community in the state of Michigan, I just, I hope people can really appreciate uh, the good quality football that uh, takes place here in high schools all around the state. And there's a good turnout over on the Clarkston side tonight, too. Yeah, I think a lot of them left at about 45 to 28 <laughs> thinking that this game was, was over. And yeah. uh, a little cool, like you said. So it's third down and four for Clarkston. And there was an illegal motion, number 84. If I find out what I did with my roster. Number 84, Luke Leindecker, cut up field before the snap. Yep, there it is, illegal motion. I'm going to decline that, yep. Declined, and now it's fourth down and four for Clarkston, and they're going to punt it and the Dragons are going to get another chance. Caleb Jones drops deep. He sets up office about the 40-yard line. Number 27, game. Gavin Pate. Timeout. Their final one. So both teams are out of timeouts. We have 2.15 to go. Clarkston is faced with a fourth down and 10 from their own 20. They're going to punt. Rochester Adams 30, Stony Creek 6 in the fourth quarter. The Dragons, of course, come back off a two-game road trip where they beat Stony Creek and then lost last week to the West Bloomfield Lakers. So Jones is back deep. Do you, do you try to set up the block or do you just try to set up the return? I'd love to see a punt return for touchdown right now. Ooh. They came after him. Caleb's just going to let it go, and it's going to go out of bounds at the Clarkston 47-yard line with 2.08 to go. So let's see what the Dragons can do. Coach Bell's huddling the offense around him. T.R. Hill breaks him out. You gotta be wise if you're Getting the ball, you gotta. If you can get out of bounds, get out of bounds. If you can stop the clock, because uh, with the first down, the chain movement, stop yes. the clock. Find ways without any timeouts to stop the clock. From the gun, trips right. Tr back looks, throws. Got a receiver. Incomplete. Boy, it looked like uh, looked like Darren Jones had it. But just couldn't come down. Yeah, no, I think I, it was a nice ball by TR. I think uh, Darren might have heard footsteps from one of the de Wolves defenders. But the ball was thrown well. You got to come up. You got to come up with a catch like that. You got to come up with a catch like uh, earlier. Dorian Hill dropped one in the yep. end zone. You got to make those plays. Coach Bell signals a play in. It's second and ten. 
Double wide, double slot for the Dragons. DR back, looks, getting pressure. Throws too high. Intended. Jones again. Intended for Darren Jones. It'll be third and 10. And I, they got to go for the sidelines from the gun. TR rolling right, looking, looking. He's going to tuck and run it, and he's out of bounds at the 40. He's going to be, they're going to mark him down at the 30. 38 yard line, he's going to be a yard short of a first down. I liked his decision making at that time because he rolled out from the far side of the field, rolled out, and he didn't he didn't turn it up right away. He 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 was trying to see if a, a wide receiver was going to come open for the Dragons. And finally, when he was just about at the top of the numbers, he decided, you know what? There's nobody coming open. I'm going to take it and run. And got nine out of it. TR under center, Roberson got a first down, Dragons. The clock stops while they reset the chains with a minute 47 to go. The ball will be spotted on the 36 yard line. TR from the gun, down, looks, throws, got a receiver, get out of bounds and he did. Complete to Dom Novak. Get out of down, bounds and a first down. Yes, and it was. And a first down. Very good. It's a long throw from the near, this yeah. near side of the field. but Good awareness by Dom to fight through the tackle and get the first down. Trips to the right. Single wide left. TR's going to run it. Nothing there. We're down to We're down to 130 to go and the clock's running. You were right there was no one there. Wolves had good coverage there in the secondary. TR throws. Got it. On the goal line. What a catch. They got him down at the two. Dorian, oh, nope, that was Novak. What a catch. Clock is running. Billy Roberson, touchdown Lake, uh, did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Wow, what an answer. 109 to go. What a catch by Novak on the preceding play. It almost looked like, I'd like to see that replay again, but it looked like he brought it in with his left hand only into his body and fell yeah. down, uh, down on it. What a huge play. Here's the pass right here. He extends his left arm. Can we see it quite? No. no. Bottom line, it's a catch. Lake Orion will take it. This is a big extra point. Ball's down. Kick is up, and the kick is partially blocked. And no good. So 109 to go. It is now 45 to 41. Would you care to guess what's coming up? Oh, I, I, I know <laughs> what's coming up. I know what's coming up. And, the, and so does everybody else here. The Dragons have executed one onside kick already tonight. And they're going to look to execute another. Coach Blackstock is going to talk to his team. Make sure everyone knows their assignment. Wow. Heck we, of a we, we, said, we said at the 
I think mid second quarter or so, with seven something to go yeah. in the second quarter, I said this is on pace to be an instant classic. Oh, I'm going to confirm. Oh, I'm going to confirm right now that this is an instant cla it classic. Is. No matter who wins this football game, yeah. this has been a great one. Absolutely. Will Hoffman teeing it up on the 40. Clarkston's got a hands team in there. There, there is nobody above number 38 in the first two rows of players. Big hop, get it. Oh. Fumble! No! Oh! Who's got it? Lake Orion's got Lake it! Lake Orion's got it again! Ho! Oh! Hit a Clarkston player and bounded back toward the kickers. And the Dragons fell on it. One minute and nine seconds to go. The Dragons are down by four. Now, I I'm going to bring it up right now because there's still a minute and nine left, no timeouts left. But this is how important that extra point and this yes. is how important that field goal missed was. Yes. Those are critical. You're, you're, that's four points right there. This game could be tied. It's not. They've got to score a touchdown to win. Dragons come out, double wide, double slot. Billy Roberson alongside T.R. Hill. T.R. back, looks, throws, complete. Stays, they stay in bounds. Gain of about two they're giving them. On second down, Dragons, no huddle. T.R. back, drops, looks, going deep. Incomplete. The Dragon receiver fell down and is just out of the reach of anybody. That stops the clock with 47.6 seconds to go. It'll be third down and seven. Folks, as we told you earlier, if the dogs go, got to go out, tell them to wait a little bit. <laughs> Or you might be cleaning up afterwards. <laughs> Third and seven. Payne in motion. High snap. Ah. And fumbled and Clarkston recovered. It was a high snap. It went up in the air and came down and Clarkston recovered. Not the let's, way. You, let's see let's it here on the replay. This. The. The motion, as the motion came through, you hit, hit TR in the, in the face mask. And then he never could get a handle on it. I don't know if the motion of pain coming from, left, from, from far side to near side had anything to do with that, but uh, you're right. Hit him in the face mask and uh, ball ends up on the ground. Clarkson comes up with it. Great work by our camera crews tonight. So it's for... First and 10, yes, these are all Lake Orion High School students working our cameras tonight. Great job, guys, and ladies. And Hine is going to take a knee, and mm. that'll do mm -mm. it. They won't have to snap it. What a football game. What a football game we saw tonight. On a homecoming night, the Lake Orion Dragons battled the Clarkston Wolves tooth and nail and come out on the short end of a 41 to 45 score. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back. Down on the field after a homecoming loss by the Lake Orion Dragons, 45 to 41 to the Clarkston Wolves. And those that got in here tonight got their money's worth. They got their money's worth. They don't have to pay a lot to get into an MHSAA football game, do they? Um, 
you could have paid a hundred dollars to come into this game when you would have gotten your money's worth. Um, just to, like like we call during the game an instant classic. It was instant classic, you know. And the third quarter was the most dull part of the game, right? No yeah. scoring at all. But when it was all said and done, it was. Uh, Two football teams, two football programs who have great tradition, who've got uh, great competitive spirit, who dislike each other while they're playing, but love, yeah, you know, I don't want to say love each other off the field, but, but you know, it's, it's absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and that's what was so enjoyable about tonight. Yeah, Lake Orion came out on the, on the opposite side, the, the losing side, but boy, oh boy. What a fun football game. You, got, you saw guys on both sides of the field just putting it all on the line and uh, for Lake Orion Clarkston. And, uh, again, that's why we call it an instant classic. And there we, we – about Ethan Clark we could use. But you got to – he was the difference in this game tonight. Absolutely. Uh, we got him at 410 yards rushing just himself. Now, I'm, not, I'm not talking team offense. I'm talking just himself. And that was really one of our keys to the game. The last key of the game we talked about, they've got to curtail the big play. And Clarkston had 10 plays that were over 20 yards tonight alone. And Ethan Clark was a part of most of them. And so um, they did not do that. And as a result, they come out on the losing side. And, you know, let's face it, this Dragons team, as we see the families come out and everything, they got nothing to hang their, ha to, to hang their heads on. They played very, very well. They got the key plays when they had to get them. They got the ball back when they had to get it. And, you know, it was, like we said, it was Clarkson Lake Orion. It happens almost every year, one way or another. Down 17 at 45-28, and they never gave up. Never. And that's a true testament to the kids that, uh, and the coaches that have put in the time, put in the effort, and, and said, and they had a chance at the end. Yep. That, that's all you can ask, to put yourself in a situation, to a chance at, a team chance at the end, and they did just that. We're trying to find Coach Bell. Uh, there's players around here. But next week, the Dragons go on the road to North Farmington. Uh, they can't look past that to week nine against Celine because there's too, we, we talked about it in pregame, there's too much riding on it with a possible playoff slot. Yeah, that's the, that's the big one, I think, next week because based on playoff points alone, if, if they get the win next week against North Farmington mm -hmm. and they happen to lose at a very, against a very good Celine team, more than likely based on playoff points, we have to see what happens tonight and, and else, elsewhere next week, but, but more than likely based on playoff points, because of the tough schedule they play, they will be able to make the playoffs. But again, go win a football game first, take care of what you can take care of, and let the, the cards fall where they may. We're still looking for Coach Bell. He'll be with us shortly. A uh, little bit of everything, Chris. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of bit of everything. I we, mean, we have heard some explanations about some of the plays, and, and it's something that, as they say, we're going to have to go to the film to verify just what was what. Yeah, that's uh, good. That's good. So, That'll Coach. One, one to, to watch again yeah. and again and again. Yeah. With Coach Bell, Coach, we said that this was an instant classic tonight. I mean, it, it had everything you want in a football game. It didn't turn out the way we wanted, but I'll tell you what, your team played really, really well tonight. We played hard. I don't know, well might be, in my eyes, might be exaggerated a little bit. The, it, we've got to clean up our own mistakes. You know, from uh, you know our you know drive down the start of the second half, we fumble the ball from down here. We had one drive where we first you know Billy rips off eight yards, and then we go penalty, penalty, and then there was miscommunication. We ran the wrong play, and now we're back in third and long. So those are our, those are mistakes on us. And then you come down to the last play of the game. I mean, we got DJ running the wheel down the sidelines wide open, and we fumble a snap. And you know, we were literally one pass completion away from this this place going bananas. Yeah. And, you know, not credit to, you know, they kept us in it. We had two defensive scores, which yep. were huge. Mm -hmm. Will Hoffman did a great job. And our onside kick teams, our special teams were huge. Yes. So everything came together. So I'm proud of them. They fought. They mm -hmm. went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They, you know, but we tell the guys, there's no moral victories here. Yeah. And we expect to win these games. And they, they, it's, they, they, for them, the growth has to be they expect to win them. And I think they do. They're, they're generally disappointed that, damn it, we had them. Yeah. And we let them off the hook. And so... You know, they, we look at it now, it's a two-game season. 
we got to go North Farmington. We got to win, and then we got to beat Celine here. And if we can do that, it will put us in the playoffs. So that's that's our goal. Two games, you know, all the knocks and bumps and bruises and the you know, setbacks. Hopefully, will make you stronger, make you tougher. They got a taste of what they're capable <coughs> of doing. Excuse me. So two games, and hopefully, we can get one more. We had it unofficially, or Chris had it unofficially. Ethan Clark with 414 okay. yards tonight. Uh, <coughs> yeah. What can you say? I mean, he's he's. You know, he's there's not one team all year's been able to stop him. Yeah, he has been running wild against everybody, and he's just he's a great back. And, and there's times, even defensively, though, where we got to grow because Ricky's calling good stuff, but we're not trusting it. That we're not right, getting to the gap, we're not, we're just not there yet. Yeah. So, if we can do that, I think we can be better there. But he's phenomenal. They, you know, they they run a great scheme with that zone scheme. He does, he's he's lightning and fast. He's a great kid. And he's he's and he's also a very good young man. He's a, he's a nice, humble kid. He's a great kid. As you said, on to North Farmington next week and then the, the you know, end of season against Celine. What have you seen from North Farmington? Well, North Farmington beat these guys by 50 last year. So it's playing motivation. We got to go down to North Farmington. It's going to be a hard fought game. They're well coached. It's Harrison, Harrison North now. Yep. So it's that staff. They got good athletes. So we've got to win that one. If we win that one, then we'll get ready to probably take on an undefeated Celine team here. But again, <coughs> I like our chances. Yeah. I know three guys here that don't have very much of a voice left after tonight. Coach, good luck next week. Thank you. All right. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Chris. Okay, we'll wrap it up from here. After a 45 to 41 Dragon loss for our producer director and the boss, Ian Locke, back in the truck. Joe Johnson doing his usual great job here on the sideline camera. From my broadcast partner, Chris Fritching, I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone.